Hey, my name is Professor Sabon Isaac Barry from Barry Time Lab, and today we will be looking at standing weight. Now, what are standing weights? Well, to grasp standing weight, we first need to imagine a string on a guitar. Now, what do you do with the guitar string? Well, you play it. You let it vibrate. You play it with a harmonic frequency in a harmonic series. You play it with the integer multiple of the fundamental frequency, which we'll get to later. And that creates harmony to the ear. It creates music. And soon, I hope that you will be the next talking and you will also be the next beat of it. Right, so first we need to look at our guitar string. Now, of course, I didn't bring an actual guitar with me, so I guess I'll have to draw it. Because my actual guitar is in the car trunk downstairs, and I'm not going down there to get it. And they have a length L, we'll say. And now, let's copy and paste for the sake of time. Copy and paste. Right, so these are our strings. Let's just move them a little to the left. So we will first let this vibrate with a fundamental wave length. So this is really, let's just look at the count of nodes and anti-nodes. What is a node? Well, if you haven't watched our wave video, go check it out. Then a node is something that stays fixed during the cycle of the wave. And an anti-node is something, a point that moves the most during the bouncing or vibration of our string. Right, so where is our anti-node and where is our node? Well, our nodes are gonna be here at the end point. So there are two nodes. And then, there's only going to be one anti-node. So, how is it moving the most? Well, if we draw the other face of our little string, then we can see it's at the widest point. Alright. So now, let's look at our anti-node count. One. look at the others, it's going to be a little bit of the same, a little bit different. So now, as you can see, there were three nodes, two antis. So anti count is two. And then for our final third harmonic, which kind of looks like three bounces. Then that gives us N, 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 and three antis, A, A, A. Right, so anti count is three. So one, two, three. Let's see a pattern here. Right, so now let's map these onto our actual wave. Out of the way and of course we need to change the color. It would look monotone if we did it, right? Alright, so hopefully red is a good color. Then it, it will reflect this. Alright, and now you can see how the anti-node is the biggest point too, but we get to that later. So, this is only half a wave because it only has one wave component at a time. It either has only one crest or one trump. But you know you need both of them for one cycle. So this is only half a cycle at all times. And so our length is equal to half lambda or half our wave. And so if we do some pesky pesky algebra, we get lambda equals 2x. Now remember the important equation 
velocity of the wave equal to wavelength of the wave times frequency of the wave. And we can do some interesting things with this, especially because f is a very important. It's the fundamental frequency, which we mentioned in the intro and we'll get to later. So let's just plug in uh, lambda equal 2L for now. And see what we can get. All right, 2L F1. And now let's find F1. F1 equals V over 2L. So let's just keep that stored in the back of our mind for now, but we'll need it later. Right. So now, let's look at the equation for our other beautiful, adorable wave. Get out the way, L. We'll use that later. All right. So the second wave looks kind of like infinity. Infinity. All right. And that has our two beautiful antinodes. I was about to say delicious. I'm sorry. And this has a full wave. So length equal lambda. Need I say anything more? No. Right. So our last and final third harmonic. Get out. Come on in. This one is the trickiest to draw out of the three normal ones most normies like you generate. So, this is our third harmonic. And here, you can see that this is actually one and a half waves. So L is actually three halves wave. And lambda is just sadly two thirds L. And this is the first point in our history where L has surpassed lambda. We are quite sad because of this moment. Okay, okay, let's get back to the show. So, now, have you seen a pattern here? Because one, two, three, that's our A's. You have one, two, three, and then you also have over here, well, you can also say this is over one, this is 2 over 2 hidden here, and this is 2 over 3. So you can see the numbers perfectly match. So you can see lambda is 2L over 1. Hmm. Then you have lambda over here is 2L over 2. And that's also a home. And then we finally have 2L over 3. That's a very suspicious one. Am I right? Because these all match up. You know what I mean? So, that means that something suspicious is going on. Uh, I don't mean that. I mean that these all correspond. So that means lambda is 2L over the number of antinodes at. Alright. So now, where have we heard of lambda before? So, let's see if we can plug in lambda in this equation here. So lambda would be v over our fundamental frequency. So now we plug this in. And turns out our fundamental frequency is actually just a normie like you. And 2L over n equals v over f. So now let's look at what happens next. Because a lot is about to happen. 2LF equals NV. And now, let's find F. F equals NV over 2L. Hmm. V over 2L. Where have I seen that before? Hmm. Let's just plug that in for normies like you. And that leaves us with F equals NF1. So that means the frequency of all harmonics, all harmony, is just an integer multiple of one beautiful frequency. F friggin' what? Watching? This had been standing waves. Professor Isaac signing out.